All right. All right. Um, it is, what's today? Today is March 10th, 2021. And my name's Steve Hodgden. And this is Modern Assets Management's uh, uh, monthly or semi-monthly uh, meeting that we talk about uh, usually real estate. Often we, you know, often we talk about notes. And tonight we're going to talk about uh, how to get started in notes, uh, some of the pitfalls, some of the mistakes I made uh, years ago when I got started and hopefully uh, uh, help, uh, help folks set a direction. Um, a little group tonight, uh, Lloyd uh, is going to be my, uh, my, my interview partner here. And sure. Eric will uh, jump in from time to time. Um, so, so uh, Lloyd sent me a, sent me an email and said he wanted to talk. And I said, let's do this online so we can share. Um, so uh, we started a couple minutes offline, but uh, let's catch up. Um, Lloyd's got, uh, Lloyd, you're in Southern California? Yes, I'm over near LAX, uh, Inglewood, California. Okay. All right. Um, our uh, primary office is in uh, Orange County. Um, but uh, um, all of our, almost all of our real estate holdings and notes are outside of California. Okay. Uh, but I'm going to talk about a California uh, deal tonight. I'm going to talk about a Florida deal and, um, and we'll see where the conversation goes. Um, and so it's, uh, so it's the first question is, is why, why, why notes? Why notes? Um, based on my research, and I've got like 10 or 15 books and looking uh, on um, different types of uh, websites, uh, of science to myself, different podcasts, notes seem to be the thing to go. I know, you know, Eddie Speed talks about notes, um, how you can be the, the bank. You can be the bank and just get the money. The promise you don't really risk anything. You know, I mean, you do risk, but there's, there's, at least three exit strategies that I know of that you can get your money back. But uh, to me, that's a safe deal. I was a landlord for a while. I didn't like that. Didn't like it, not one bit. You know, not knowing if you're gonna get the rent on time, you gotta pay your mortgage and you gotta have those assets. You have to have your backup and you know, they tear it up and then you gotta go and try to get an inspection. They don't open the doors half the time. Yeah, so, but notes I think are the best thing. It's new to me and um, I think that's the best way to go for a portfolio. I mean, I am into um, mutual funds and stocks. I have a significant portfolio in that, but I think I should divest it and uh, bring on the notes and to help subsidize what I'm doing. Yeah, no, uh, so I just, uh, to tell you, to tell you, one of the things I'm gonna say, try to say a lot is, I don't know what I'm doing. I just have experience. <laughs> um, give you an idea on why I don't know anything about stocks. I liquidated a handful of things blinked and they all went up 20% recently. Right. So, I, yeah. you know, so, and then mm -hmm. anyway, so it's, um, so I try to, uh, I've been trying more and more in my old age to focus on what I'm, what I'm good at and not keep trying to invent new things. Right. Um, so you, so you've taught, you've, uh, seen some of, uh, Eddie Speed's and Colonial Capital stuff. Um, yes. What uh, what what books did you read? What did you what did you what oh, did you read goodness. that that what um, did you read that really said something to you? Um, There's a whole bookshelf over there of these things. Right. Yeah. I, you probably have most of mine. I have them all in the car because wherever I go, I have to read and study. But the um, the one is the Red Book about the calculator. What's this guy's name? He's the, the Godfather of it, the whole thing. It's the Red Book. Um, and you, I know you have it. There, yeah, that's it. Yep, yeah, that's the main one. Invest in debt. Yep, yeah, that's the one I got started in. And then I read some by Van Horn. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of things about the note space, um, buying notes. I have like ten books on, on notes. So I haven't read them all, but from what I gather, just perusing them, a lot of them are saying the same thing, but they're rehashing it a little bit. You know, mm -hmm. some are adding, some are are uh, deleting, some are suggesting, some are advising. But they all start, I guess, half the book is usually their story. They don't really get into the meat potatoes of what's going on. You know, they talk about how they started. They started, you know, from being a landowner, flipping houses, this and other. And it's very, a very small chapter on just doing notes. I'm like, I bought it for the notes, not for the life story of what you did with real estate. 
but you know, it is what it is. So then I go into listening to podcasts and the podcasts are okay, but half of it is a lot of rhetoric and they're just talking and laughing and a lot of them can't get the, the microphones working and stuff. And so it's a very small- You mean like my meetings, yeah. <laughs> no, 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 no. But they don't really get to the meat and potatoes of what they're doing. So half the time their guests are, are pretty good. So I'll just go with the guests and talk to the guests. You know, I know you have mm-hmm. know, uh, Dickie Baldwin. Mm-hmm. Um, yes, I called him and he turned me on to several people and I appreciate about him. Um, you know, I have him on my vendor list for BPOs and I talked to another name, Lori Lowe. I forgot the name of the, uh, she's out in Texas and she does due diligence. So what she does for $25, she'll look at your stuff, make sure everything is in place. Oh, so, okay. I don't have to do that then, but no I, I know me, I want to know how to do it. I want to know what you're looking at versus me spending the money. If I have to spend the money, if I look at it, I like it, I'll do my due diligence and then I'll have you double check me. That's what I would do. Mm-hmm. Checks and balance. Mm-hmm. So if I miss something, then it's okay. But I still need to know. I, you know, it's like, I don't like to have a car and not know how it works. You know, I, I want to know how it works. And then I'll get a mechanic saying, this is what I know. And you check it out. That's the way I, I that's the way I roll. So the due diligence is one thing. Prices is the next. Um, I already have uh, a servicer, Madison. Um, I have Madison to, to do that, the servicing for, I'm doing a JV right now, actually. Um, it should close. I just did it about a week ago. All the paperwork is coming. I got a thick file, real thick file of paperwork that the guy's going to go over with me on how to, to, to see what I have all the paperwork in. So I'm just going over it myself. And I even ordered um, a BPO, a recent BPO to match what that BPO is so I can verify. That's what I'm thinking, you know, because no one's told me this, but to verify, look at it, because I know things change. The last BPO was a year. So things may have changed. I don't know, but it's good to have a new BPO. So when I do sell that note, they have all the, B, they have a, a consistent record of that particular note. And from what I read and what I hear, if they trust you, you'll get more business. People trust you with your notes. And if you have everything together, that brings more business. I mean, is that true pretty much? Yeah. yeah. That's, so, that's right. so let's let's uh let's take a take a little break, little break there. So there's you've done a fair amount of research. Um it's in the last in the last year there's no conventions to go to. There's right. there's some things that are done online. Um some of the meetings are pitch fests. It's speaker after yeah. speaker selling something. I find value in that being a salesman myself. Um, okay. It was when I hear, I can read through the promises and listen to what the problems that the sales, per, that the problems the person is trying to solve. Right. Okay. And so, so the, the flow of notes come generally two ways. There's the tertiary uh, fourth level uh, big public market where uh, Fannie and Freddie will sell foreclosures to giant hedge funds who then go down to smaller hedge funds or go down to smaller funds. And then the stuff that's that's too small or too dented will come out to guys like us. Wow. Wait, what is that? You that can't, I thought it was, you I thought it was a secretary. You can't, uh, well, we said that they say secondary, right? Right. They say secondary means everything after the first. Um, so I bought, uh, I bought 36, my, I bought 36 lots in one, in one package from a, from a small hedge fund. Um, they were, they were, um, deep subprime, uh, foreclosures that had been, that had been modified and the homeowners got a whale of a deal in 2012. Okay. They got to buy their own house back for half. Okay. Right. So mm-hmm. all those notes went up. All the home values were going up when I bought them in 2016. All those homeowners were well in the money um, on those assets. And uh, they, they shouldn't have been a single reason any of them ever missed a payment. Okay. Nine of the 36 stumbling through some stage of foreclosure, whatever this, that, you know, bankruptcy, all mm-hmm. manner of stuff. Um, I think 13 of them, 14 of them had had some level of delinquency. The, so the point, point there is, you know, we talked offline just for a minute, uh, secured, uh, um, secured uh, f- paying uh, 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 firsts 
versus um, seconds that are in default. So you got you know mm -hmm. distressed debt. You got all these different things, and the the more trouble in the note, the more work it's going to be in the note. Right. Just the okay. Same. It's the same as owning the rental. Oh. It's the same. There's still you still have except you've got a servicer there. Just same as like if you had a property manager. Okay. Okay. Right? But mm -hmm. there's there's stuff. Um, I may tell the Alexandria, Louisiana story, but I've told that before. Maybe we'll do some other stuff first. Okay. Um, so, so I bought 36 notes in 12 states. And what happened to me then is I realized, if I found, is that I had to learn 12 sets of state laws, that I had to um, hire, you know, when I needed an attorney, I had an attorney here and an attorney there and a, and a BPO here and a something there. And I had all these different people that I had that they had just one little relationship with me. So I, they didn't care about me because they weren't gonna make any money, right? Oh. So, mm -hmm. so Eric, who's here, um, he and I have history. He and I, um, he and I have, have some experience together. I'm in California, he's in Pensacola and mm -hmm. he is in he's in the fix and flip game and doing all that kind of stuff. And he works, he works for a company that um, finds rehabs, sells houses. Uh, and I came in and said, no, I want to play in the owner finance space. Okay. Because, because there's the, so you, you're going to buy a distressed, you're going to buy a, you're going to buy a note. You're going to buy a home value of $90,000. Okay. Um, you're going to see in your credit, in, in the file, you're going to get way out in the right-hand side, it's going to be a payment string that mm -hmm. says what they've done for the last 12 or 18 months. Mm -hmm. And I will tell you, my experience is the condition of the interior of the home looks mm -hmm. like the payment string. Wow. Right. Okay. If they're sloppy and paying, paying the note, then the house is going to be in disrepair. Oh. Right. So, so you got that. So think about that. You know, so so the payment work. history tells a lot. Yeah. Payment. Private ownership tells mm -hmm. a lot. Right. So how okay. do you tell private ownership? You, um, you, whoop, um, uh oh, hang on. People have the wrong meeting link. Um, so somebody else is trying to come in. Uh, mm -hmm. Nice that they took the time to write to me. Um, so, um, so we're gonna have one more join us. I sure don't know. Don't know where other people went. Um, I. So um, I almost canceled because I was going to send everybody to a really good webinar that's going to start in about a half an hour. Um, oh, wow. but, but we'll come back. We'll come back to that a little bit. Talking about people mm -hmm. to go learn from. I'm going to go over to the bookcase and mm -hmm. say, this guy, this guy, this guy. Um, so anyway, so right. um, let me go and share a screen and we'll talk about this transaction. Um, okay. How'd you make the correlation from sloppy payment history means a sloppy interior house? Um, a number of uh, 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 managing rentals. At one point, I had more than 200 rentals in a company that I was managing. Okay. And the, 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 the evictions, the right. home, the, in, the, the things that people will live in, will live in is horrifying. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So. Um, so let me see, I got to go find my screen. I want to show you, I want to show you the kind of stuff that is available. Oops, zoom error. Um, let's see, wait for John to get uh, in there. John, thanks for joining. I don't know what's wrong with the zoom link on that page. Um, I'll redo it for next month. I appreciate you taking the uh, extra effort to track us down. We, we just got started. We're talking about starting in notes from the beginning. Um, so, mm -hmm. um, so we're going to run through this. So the uh, looking for, um, let me see. So share screen, new share. All right. So we see this uh, 24 Lincoln Road, Pensacola. Right. Mm -hmm. okay. So this is a um, little tiny thousand square foot home. Um, it's 60 years old. It's uh, in the, it's, it's in a tough part of town. Um, it is today, it's a rental. 
um, but I bought it and Eric's company put it all back together um, and we and we sold it. Uh, well, we first we did is we put a tenant in on a uh, one year option to purchase. So okay. um, so all into this house, um, I think I bought it at about 30,000. So it's a, mm -hmm. it's a real entry level uh, kind of property. Had a tenant in it for about $500 a month. Uh, so that's you know, that making $6,000 on 30. That's, you know, that fits that number you're looking for. Mm -hmm. um, you know, but off of, so that's, that's a gross 20% yield. But then you've got really heavy taxes in Florida. You've got repairs. You've got, you've got this, that, the, other. the same as if you had a rent, as same as if you were <coughs> um, uh, just a straight landlord. So at the end of the year, we sold the house to the tenants. They're great people. They're lovely. They're wonderful. Two beautiful little kids. Um, the guy makes enough money. It's just everything is okay. And then poof, he goes, he disappears. What? Family crisis. He had to go home back to Alabama to take care of his mother. Him and the him and the missus break up. She goes off somewhere else, all that kind of thing. And suddenly the place is empty. It cost eight thousand dollars to put the house back together. So I didn't have to go to a foreclosure. I did what's called a deed in lieu. Okay. Right. Where mm -hmm. we said, look, we're, we're not going to come chase you for any of this. You're a good guy. Just sign here. You know, turn back the keys, and and we're good. Right. Mm -hmm. So he went off on his way. You know, he he was grateful that he didn't have to pay back rent and any of that stuff. I just 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 call it a day. Um, Eight thousand dollars to put the house back into rent ready condition. Now, how did you? I'm sorry. Go ahead, and I'll yeah. I'll ask right. later. So and so we. Um, we have subsequently had to put in another $6,500 for a uh, plumbing uh, pipe pipe and bathroom repair. Um, so it's the same as man now, I've, now I'm managing it back as a rental, right? Mm -hmm. um, as, soon as, that, as soon as the current tenant's lease is up, we're gonna go sell the house because there's a market for it and uh, there's, there's an appetite for this at above what I would pay for it. The Zestimate here, which is one of the things we look at because Zillow is such a great marketing, uh, says 50. This home is more like 60 or 65, maybe more. Mm -hmm. um, it's, but again, it's in a tough neighborhood, but it's, you know, but it's been, we've, we have cared for it. Um, we'll, or one of the things we'll do is we'll put a new roof on it and, and, and we'll, we'll, you know, we'll take care of it. Um, so what I, what I found is I had 36 properties in 12 states. So I decided that I liked better the idea of, of owner finance and then selling and then buying and selling those notes. So okay. this was so this was one that I I bought, created a mortgage, and then I sold the mortgage to another investor. Okay. I immediately bought it back. You sold it and bought it back. I sold it and bought it back because I wanted to deal with the foreclosure because I had the, I had I sold it on a partial and I had the back end of the okay. uh, back end of the note, mm -hmm. so I didn't. It was just just give it back, you know. And and that's often you'll see in those kinds of transactions. Typically, a note and when you buy a partial or you buy a mortgage, the uh, recourse uh, features are usually very stilted toward the seller. Um, mm. That it's only at their own, only at their own choice that you can get stuck holding this kind of thing. Um, so, so, so remember. So first, that that, that long, you know, long story long is the the inside of the house looks like the uh, looks like the payments. Wow. Right? So okay. pay attention to that. The neighborhood matters. The crime rate matters. The school mm. district matters. All that stuff matters. Just so when you're looking to buy a note, think you're buying the house. You know, you know, what am I going to do if four of the five options that there are disappear and I've got a piece of property in, uh, well, the one that my problem child is in Alexandria, Louisiana. Mm -hmm. The house is literally on the wrong side of the tracks. The wow. BPO was off by half. Are you serious? Right? by half. Whoa. So you're, a BPO is a network goes out to a real estate agent in that town. 
They may drive by, they may just do it by looking at area comps that are right around them, a clerical work, and right. Right, you know, draw a little circle and give you back the number. The houses on the other side of the railroad tracks were twice as valuable as the house on this side of the railroad track. So this house, that, so, so anyway, um, so pay attention, pay attention. We, have, we now have this marvelous Google Earth tool that lets right. you drill down and drive around the neighborhood. Right. Okay. Right. right? Mm -hmm. Look around. Look around the neighborhood. Look at. You know, are there? You know, we got cars parked on lawns. We got, we got stuff up on blocks. Is the house? <laughs> Somebody asked me to review it. Review a note. I said no, 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 no. She bought the note anyway. We come back. We come down and look at a current Google Earth picture because she had an old Google Earth picture. Right. Mm -hmm. And Cle in Cleveland, the houses on either side had been knocked down by the city and the house across the street was boarded up. <laughs> right? She had immediately had, uh, as soon as the property changed hands, she got cited by the city for, uh, for nuisance abatement because the house was uh, unfit for occupancy. Wow. Right. But wow. she was buying a note for ten thousand dollars, thinking that she was instantly going to turn it into twenty-five. You know, I I understand that, and I know there's two websites. There's a, what is it, Neighborhood Scout? Neighborhood one Scout. One is Neighborhood yeah. Scout, and I found one happenstance. I don't know if you've heard of Area Vibes. AreaVibes.com. If you put that address in AreaVibes.com, it tells you the amenities. It gives a grade A to F. It'll say crime, it'll say schools, it'll say employment, it'll give you a whole rating system. Good. And my rating system is 70 plus. And I've seen some in some nice areas that would rate 59 or 60. Mm -hmm. And crime is too high for the area, it tells you everything and it's free. So area vibes, okay. if you start looking, that's what I looked at, you know, just check it out, let me know what you think about it. Okay, um, the other one I was gonna recommend is city-data. Oh. And that's an old, old line place and it's an aggregator of public records. Um, you can get into it, you can get into a decent uh, drill downs um, uh, crime map. Is so, that city-data.com or? Um, I think it's .com, yeah, but I know it's okay. city-data. Um, okay. So um, you talked about, uh, you talked about Madison, um, I've heard good things about Madison. I don't use, I don't, I haven't used Madison. Um, my notes are at FCI and another one, another place that I have them is at Security National. Um, and Security National is expensive, but does excellent work in uh, recovery and bankruptcies and that kind of thing. Um, mm -hmm. Let's jump to, let me jump to yield for a little bit. Because one of the things, one of the things you said is, you know, you wanted to make, uh, you know, X amount of money. Um, so what do I have here? I have. So here, here's a ninety thousand. Here is a fifteen-year, ten percent interest, ninety thousand dollar note, with a payment of nine hundred and sixty-seven dollars and fourteen cents. Okay. Mm -hmm. So if you bought that note at, if it's, if it's a, a payer and you bought that note, um, say 80 cents, say we're lucky we get it for 80 cents. Mm -hmm. Oops, there we go. We're lucky we get it for 80 cents. Uh, let's see. Um, I plug that in. That would jump your yield to fourteen percent, but you're not okay. going to buy a note straight out of the gate. So let me go put the ninety thousand. Let me go put the ninety thousand. Uh, hang on. Uh, let me make sure somebody else isn't coming in. Nope. Okay. Um, let me go put the ten back here. So this is where we start. So say the note's been seasoned for twenty four months. Mm -hmm. That means there's eighty four thousand dollars left. Mm -hmm. All right, so we have an eighty four thousand dollar note. Eighty four, 
two. Oh, let me uh, let me go let me go back and do that the other way. Two, five, seven. Oh, I can get this way. This would be easier. Nope, nope, nope. Times probably if it's got two years of straight payments, it's going to trade for nine. Uh, not, not missing a payment, it's going to trade for ninety cents. So that note's going to cost you seventy five thousand dollars. Okay. Mm -hmm. And you're going to have 156 payments left. Oops. So what happens when you put two uh, two minuses in a, right. uh, in a in in one of these in one of these programs? You get uh, you get wacky numbers. Oops. Is that there? No, hang on. Nine, six, seven. I'm used to doing this. I do this on my phone. So this is uh, doing it on the computer is. Uh, uh, oh, 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 no. See, I'm doing it wrong. Hang on. Um, right, $84,000. Right, for, I mean, started the eighty four thousand dollars, and if I buy that at times point nine equals this, that's going to give me a twelve percent return. Okay. Right, but I'm going to have to pay servicing. I'm going to have to pay some uh, pickup fees at the beginning. I'm going to have to do some of this, some of that. Right. Right. Um, so maybe my 967 um, depend, also depends whether you're buying a contract for deed and whether there's back taxes and all that kind of stuff. So let's just say, say you only cost you $30 a month to service the note. Okay. So we'll say it cost you 937. That kicks your, your yield down a little bit, right? Um, mm -hmm. But now you're now you're banking on a hundred percent getting every payment every month on time, right? Um, when you start looking at these, that states, happens sometimes. Yeah, that happens sometimes, and I've I've had I've had uh, well I've had a lot of loans I've had a lot of loans pay off that you wouldn't think would have, um, but okay. again because there was equity, right? And so that's mm -hmm. the other piece. There's was there equity, um, so this is a nice comfortable little deal. Um, a, a clean ninety thousand dollar note isn't going to be readily available to us. It's going to get picked off by the big by the big players. It's going to be get picked off by uh, uh, First National. It's going to get uh, all the. Um... Have you subscribed to this? No, I will too. I okay. will go look We're... for go look for the paper source, and paper source university. But uh, mm -hmm. you know the back, the back of this is full of people buying, you know, big companies that are buying notes, and they're looking for us to, uh, they're looking for us to go find them for them for for to sell them to them, right? Um, okay. But uh, um, the uh, the paper source, and they have a little free school, a uh, couple of classes they call Paper Source University. They've got a lot of free information. Um, they're, they're the seller finance, uh, old world. They've been around since the eighties. Okay. Um, but so here you've got, you've got this, you know, you've got this problem, you know, you've got this, you've got this loan, um, that's going to give you 11 and a half percent return unless something, unless something goes wrong. Right. Mm. So, so again, so back on present value, um, my, um, my fifty thousand um, dollar. So let's look at my my fifty thousand uh, dollar problem child that I had my uh, that I had my uh, repossession with the guy who just gave me back the we asked for and he gave me back the the house. Um, he was paying five thirty seven a month, but I was paying a hundred and twenty dollars a month in uh, in in uh, um, taxes and uh, and and insurance, right? As it went, I thought, while, they, while I thought they pay for insurance. Don't they pay for insurance? Um, 
you have a choice when you set these up that you can set them up as PITI, principal interest taxes and insurance, but then you have to back out those numbers when you figure when you figure what your yield is, because that's just a straight flow through. And when you do that, you you're also if they're gonna if the if Madison is going to escrow for right. for that, then mm -hmm. there's gonna be an upcharge on their monthly rate. Oh. Right? Could just be could just be five dollars. You know, mm -hmm. but it's you know, but it's uh, you know, five dollars here, ten dollars there, you know. Um, the note goes delinquent, typically the servicing rate doubles. Right. So they miss a payment that. and they stay mm -hmm. they stay behind, then you're gonna be paying thirty dollars a month. Um, I pay 60, I pay $75 for bankruptcy and I'm not getting any money. Right. Wow. But, you know, and so, you know, so you gotta, you know, so you gotta, gotta remember that all those things there, we have this idea that we can, you know, that we can say, I want to make 10, I want to make 12, I want to make 15, where the big players in this world are happy making five and six. Oh, really? Yeah. So the, you know, like the, the companies that have this have accounts by the thousands you know they're happy making five and six because they're borrowing federal you know federal money at two or less now, right? So they're making okay. a they're, you know they're taking they're taking fan you know, taking uh, Fannie Mae money at this number and then they're you know making a margin you know so that's um, called an arbitrage right an yeah, arbitrage yeah so right so um, so the what I've learned is that the ten and twelve percent yield the fifteen percent yield the um, the workouts all that stuff takes muscle and time and I can't count that in my passive sit on the couch yield right oh, okay. So, okay so I pay I pay people that I borrow money from seven and a half percent and they don't have to do anything and it's secured by a handful of different assets so they've got their they've got their money spread across 500 loans um, we're, uh, we're we do we do um, primarily what we're doing now is small ticket uh, small ticket subprime loans uh, three to five thousand um, mm dollars, -hmm. and I've got a I've got a thousand active loans right now. Wow! So it's so, but it's a business. I mean, it's work, man. I mean, I'm this is this is mm -hmm. you know, I mean, I look at I look at my margin and go, this is killing it. Yeah, but I put in fifty hours. You know? Wow! So, but, but the way that everybody's talking. It's like, you know, you set it and forget it pretty much. That's how right. they are selling it. Right. And so, and sometimes, yes. Sometimes, yes. And so the set it and forget it kind of money. Um, speaking of Eric, who's sitting there being really quiet. Um, so we're going to, um, we're going to finance. Um, let's see. So we're going to finance. No, not 120. Say 12. I'm going to do a 12 month note at 8.9. So so what Eric and I'll do is, because I know Eric, we've done I think eleven projects now. Um, I can I can give money to Eric and not expect uh, not expect an interest payment. I can say we can put it all on the end, so I can lend him money for a year, and say I want nine percent, um, and I'll take a, I'll take a piece of the back end, and so. Typically, what I'm doing is I'm buying I'm buying the dirt and he's building a house. Um, I'm putting in the I'm putting in the uh, uh, I'm putting in the uh, uh, equity money um, and then uh, and then there's a then there's a, su a superior loan for construction. Um, you know, um, or or I'm funding or I'm funding uh, something that's going to be a quick flip. And either we're going to have a, a nine percent payout to me, or we're going to do a 50-50 uh, joint venture. Um, you know, we're going to do things in, in all kinds of different ways. So this is this is another way to look at what am I what am I trying to get to, right? And this is mm -hmm. this is the no work, um, no no work. Don't do anything. Just you know, just wait for money to just wait for money to come in. 
you can do this also with um, uh, let me change that. You can do things on a, whoops. You can do things on an interest only loan mm -hmm. and get paid and get paid it, get paid back at the end. And I'll do that with, uh, I'll do that with folks that I haven't done a dozen deals with. It just makes me feel better to have a little bit of interest money coming in every month. Mm. <laughs> and typically, and again, typically it's putting in, so it's, it's helping a builder or flipper um, with some short-term financing, right? Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, so this can be 180, it can be 12. Um, it's going to get you the same way. Um, what I, what I, what I'll do is I'll write a loan like this, you know, call it nine. And if it goes beyond the 12 months, then the interest rate goes to 15. Wow. Right. So you know, keep to keep the uh, to keep the builder on track and and not get distracted. Um, I've done this loan at fifteen, where at the end of twelve months it goes to thirty. Wow. Right. And mm -hmm. well, if it goes to thirty, you know, so my greet my my I get this little smirk, right? I get this little ooh, right? <laughs> um, and when that happens, that's the guy on this shoulder. The guy on the other shoulder has got to say, wait, something bad's going to happen, right? Because 30 is unsustainable. It's okay, okay. for a couple of months, but mm -hmm. there's got to be, there has to be an exit. So I put six figures into a Bel Air uh, mansion. Okay. Right? Uh, 1200 Linda Flora. Right, twelve. I remember. Months. Didn't you didn't you do a video on that? I did I a video did. on that. Yes, I did a I video on that. I had to foreclose to get paid. Wow. Right, mm -hmm. and a, a group of us put a million five into a deal like this. That what sunk us is we were behind a delinquent three and a half million dollar first. Oh wow! So the people that supplied the first. They were gravy. They didn't care. That loan was adding fifty thousand dollars a month in interest. They mm -hmm. didn't care. The property eventually sold for more than seven million dollars. So they were happy to sit there and just wait to let the clock tick. Mm -hmm. Because I, because I, you know, I got lucky and actually did the deal the way I was supposed to. I was able to jump ahead for the from the first because I foreclosed first. So I controlled mm -hmm. that deal. He hustled up, got me paid. Wow. Right. Okay. So, but it was, it was ugly, man. It was 18 months of just gut wrenching. Mm. Right. So, so mm. what did I learn? You know, I, you know, I, I, I thought it was all that and I'm going to start doing big deals in LA and you know, that's great. You know, if you can take a hit like that, but I couldn't support that first. Right. I couldn't make $50,000 a month payments. Mm. So mm. I've been staying and I like mid Whatever the median is for the town, I like to be under the median house price of the town. That's my that's my value that I like. Okay. Right? Blue collar, um, you know, if we're talking Pensacola, I want to sell homes to retirees, ex military folks. You know, um, you know, uh, just bread bread and butter. Um, I've got I've got one loan. Um, it's a Montclair, Eric, um, and that borrower. Um, is, uh, is, is an undocumented uh, electrician. Mm -hmm. And if his check is in cash, he's calling. Really? Right, I mean, he, had, he, has, uh, he has a first and a second. I sold the first. Um, so I got back all my capital and I have a little $15,000 second that pays $178 a month. And, mm -hmm. if my pe and if my people haven't banked his check on time, um, his ACH didn't go through. He's calling and asking why it hasn't happened. 
You know, mm-hmm. he got a heck of a deal on a house. He got a house that's, you know, he's probably got $20,000 in equity in it. He's got a loan that nobody else would ever have given him because he wouldn't be able to pass any of the mortgage loan origination rules. Mm-hmm. And we knew, you know, we knew, we, we knew the house. We, uh, we, had, we had brought the house back to life. We knew the house. We knew the history of the borrower and we knew the neighborhood really well. So the boots on the ground partner is near is is probably oh I'm gonna say it's more important than the asset. Oh really? Right? Okay. I think I really think I would you know, I have to say that. So because I'm not cha- I'm not chasing deals um, elsewhere. I've got a you know I've got a rental. I live in Northern California. I've got one rental up here. Um, I'm writing um, I'm writing a different style. I'm a licensed lender here in California, and I'm doing loans like this. Mm-hmm. to uh, people that are selling for people that are selling their houses and the, the house needs to be uh, so the market the market's nuts right you know right right um, so but if i want to if i've been in the house 20 years it's not sale ready right mm-hmm. there's hundreds of thousands of dollars in in lost possibility but i'm i'm house rich and cash poor and mm-hmm. i'm working with remax and i and bait and and my 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 test there is how good is the agent? How long have they been around? Are, you know, do they know what they're doing? And I'm part of my lending underwriting is the agent. So mm-hmm. I'll lend. So I'll lend up to ten percent of the home value on an unsecured note. Really? My security is a letter in escrow, just like a a contractor bill, that mm-hmm. I get paid at closing. Wow. Right. And I put a six month term, 9% interest, 9% flat interest charge. And so the APR is 18%. Well, but really all the borrower is paying is 9%. Right. Okay. That's, you know, so they're borrowing, they're borrowing a hundred thousand dollars. They're paying back 109,000. So it's mm-hmm. not, it's not, it's not onerous or, you know, uh, illegal or any of that. It's, you know, it's, it's a short term fixed interest product. I can fund it day one. Hmm. So they can hmm. get, they, you know, the realtor can get their team on it, get the house turned on the market in 30 days, sold in 90, everybody's happy. Right. So, so there's that kind of, that kind of paper too. So, you know, so we, we're chasing, you know, you said you're going to a JV. Where, where, where is it? It's uh, in Indiana. It's off of Bloom Street. Mm-hmm. Okay. In, Blo- in Bloomington? No, it's called... It's in Sullivan, Indiana. It's Sullivan. Okay, I don't know. I don't know there. I've got. Uh, I've done work in Gary. Um, I've got a. Mm-hmm. Uh, I have a project going right now, uh, in Cedar Lakes, which is a, a, a suburb of Gary, um, in a in a, a nice suburban area, um, mm-hmm. and uh, and I like Northwest Indiana, um, but I tell you, you can. There's a program with the with the with the city of gary the city of gary will sell you a uh, rundown house and if you bring it back to life they will then sell they will then give you two more lots that's how desperate they really? are housing there they will give you two lots now this is this is there's parts of gary that lots are 500 or a thousand or fifteen hundred dollars and are you serious uh, yeah it, but you but you buy the lot for a thousand dollars, and you immediately have a three thousand dollar bill to destroy to to demo the house that's there, <laughs> right? And, and you got to factor all, you got to factor all that in. And so really, yeah. So so the mm. so you you know you're looking at Eddie Speed stuff. You're looking at all these folks, and you've got to say, how deep into this do we want to go, right? Um, the city of the mm-hmm. city of Gary back in 2011, 12, when they got their hardest hit funds money from the federal government, part of this Save America thing that um, that the Obama administration did, and how they're going to you know rescue everything. So they, in some places, the homeowner and I've had home, I've had a, I've had two homeowners that applied for a federal grant that paid their mortgage payment for a whole year. Okay. Because they were, they fit the financial social class and the house was in a blighted area and it was, it fit, it fit this set of rules. And so the money goes to the, 
Money funnels down to the city and then they decide what they want to do with it. The city of Gary used that money to demolish houses. Right? The so this is what I understand. How do you how do you buy these houses and not know the particulars like you find out in Gary, Indiana? How do you know like you'll buy something at, that you believe is a discount, then all of a sudden you get hit with all these fees and you got to do this, you got to you just don't know. How do you know? You pick up the phone and you call the city and you say, "Hello, I'm thinking about buying this house. What's owed on it?" And and I've had that I had in Gary back when I started doing this in 2016. Um, I found the guy who ran the department that decided what houses were going to be left standing and which ones were going to be knocked down. Wow. Right. And there's a guy that makes the decision. Right. Um, so, but what happened in Gary, so you have to know the whole macro thing. Why, why is this house cheap? The steel industry went to China in the eighties. Gary went from a quarter of a million people to 75,000 people. Wow. Okay. It just emptied. And what was left were unemployed people. Mm -hmm. So when you have that, you get gangs, drugs, crime, Gary spiral down and spiral down. It was the most dangerous place in the world, right? The most dangerous place in the United States. It was, there were more, there were more deaths there than there were in Jalisco, Mexico, blah, 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 blah. Right. Gary's not that town anymore. Gary's population is now starting to increase. There have been billions of dollars pumped in federal money pumped into Gary. This, there's new business coming back in. There's new, those factories are now being repurposed to be other things. There's a, there's a train line from Chicago to Gary that people are starting to migrate out of the high tax state, high tax Chicago and moving into the, moving into the country in Indiana, moving out, moving okay. among the cornfields, right? Um, mm -hmm. So there, there's a resurgence that's going on there. It's not a resurgence in million dollar homes. It's a resurgence in hundred to 300 plus thousand homes, which is a, which is a, a thing I can get my head around, right? I, we're the, I'm sitting in this fourth bedroom of this house and there's no way I would buy this house at this price today. I would not want to make those mortgage payments. <laughs> right? Yes, know? right. So I, you know, I, I paid my monthly tax bill on the last house I owned was more, was more than more than any of my borrowers pay in total principal interest taxes and insurance. Wow. Right. Wow. So the, my highest price, my highest price mortgage is a thousand dollars a month. Really? Yeah. Yeah. And, and, you know, my, my day job, my lending business, my average payment is $200 in change. So I had this idea I was going to migrate from $200 in change to $600 in change. And I was mm -hmm. going to get three times as much money and not need so many customers and so much headache and all that. Well, it turns out I'm better at the $200 payments than <laughs> I am at the $1,000 payments. So, mm -hmm. oh, well, so I work. Um, but anyway, so that was that. Was that. Um, the, the crime rate in Gary um, is now not so bad. Um, the crime rate in Alexandria, Louisiana, where my last blow up was, is four times what it was, what it is in Gary. Wow. Right. Mm -hmm. Alexandria, Louisiana, progress passed them by. It's unemployed. It's destitute. There's no education. The you know, schools, you know, every, everything is just a disaster. It's mm -hmm. just a disaster. Um, it's not on the national grid anymore. So uh, uh, trucking grid. So it just, it's the town's just dried up. Plus they had two hurricanes. Mm -hmm. Right. So I wound up selling, I just sold a house for 35,000. Another one that's a knockdown for 15. No, not the 15. No, the 15 is going to come back. 35, 15, a knockdown for five and a vacant lot for three. So the whole thing all in for 60. So I how much did you buy it for? How much, how much did you buy them for? That's the punchline. That's the punchline. Okay. Um, so $60,000. When I bought the 56, when I paid $56,000 for a note on a house that was on the, on the market for 80,000, I thought, how can I lose? <laughs> right <laughs> what more do i need to look at right right the house is on listed with an agent for eighty thousand. 
I'm going to buy the note for 56. It's going to be fine. Well, the listing was grossly overinflated. The house was only worth 50. COVID put me back a year from being able to do a, a foreclosure. I started nearly three years ago with this property. And the value of that property went from the first listing of 80 down to 30. So I sold it for 35 on terms. So the whole bundle is a $60,000 note that's like this. It's a $60,000 note, 15-year uh, uh, term, a balloon in three years mm -hmm. to, give the, to give the person there, the new, the new on the ground, boots on the ground, contractor, investor, time to put everything back together, establish a cash flow, and be able to pay me out. Wow. I could have JV'd, right? I could have mm -hmm. JV'd, but I don't want to do JV, one JV with one person in one town that I'm never going to go to. Right. And so yes. I will continue to go back to it. So you don't need a, you don't need a lot of people. You need a couple of people that you you become important to. Mm -hmm. So I'm important to Eric's employer because I'm a pretty steady source of 50, 100 grand, you know, any more than that, I start to get weird. Um, but I'm a good source <laughs> for, hey, I need, tw I need 20 to go buy a lot. Okay, here's the wire, done, mm -hmm. right? Just, you know, put wow. it in, you know, just leave it, leave it in a long-term escrow and, you know, and, and, and so I'll, I'll put out 20 and I'll get back 23 and I'll put that right back out and I'll make another three and I'll just keep rolling it over and adding it up there. Um, um, some of those deals are, are in a self-directed IRA. Well, actually they're in an HSA, a health savings account. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's, a so it's in a tax-free uh, 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 note there. And so because it's oh, and it's tax, tax free vehicle. So because it's, because it's tax free, I don't need to, I don't need to charge 15% to net 10. Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm going to net 10. Right. Right. You know, so, you know, so it's, so, so much of this is also deal structure. Right? Mm -hmm. When you are starting to buy and sell these things and you're starting to do stuff, you suddenly become an, a, you're suddenly you're what the IRS put you. I'm not a CPA. Um, you're now <laughs> called, you can get called a trade or business. So mm -hmm. everything is ordinary income. There's no more any capital gains. Really? Right. So you can, you can, you can work yourself into being a, being a business and not being an investor. Do you need licensing for that? No, no. So no, it's the IRS figuring out how to get you to pay more taxes. Um, so the so the the um, the house we looked at, um, we're gonna look at another. We'll go look at another house here. But the house we looked at, the the little house in Pensacola. Mm -hmm. um, you see, um, I held this. Um, for a year to put it into a cat to make sure it was long term capital gains. Okay. Right. So, and as it turns out, I've held it now five years. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we had some problems. We had to bring it back to life. I've got a tenant in it today making $650 a month payments. You know, I'm netting, I'm netting $500 a month on an asset that, uh, that, you know, good little house, you know, good little house, what? lovely, lovely, uh, Lo lovely uh, uh, renter and her and her daughter, but you know, I want to position. I want to move up one. I want to just move. I want to move up from D to B to C B. Okay. Right? Right? So it's so that puts me into nineteen seventies. You know, vintage probably or nineteen post nineteen seventy eight. Um, if we're gonna play here in California, um, I think you're going east out to Riverside County. Right. I think mm -hmm. you're going, I think you're going anywhere up in the high desert, looking at mobile homes, doing mobile mm -hmm. home financing. Mm -hmm. um, and again, not being, not being scared of not having a mortgage because it's, they, a, a mobile home never moves, right? No, mobile mm -hmm. home never moves. And maybe you can find 15% deals out there in the 20, $30,000 range in some of them, you know? Um, maybe you can buy partials that'll um, get you get you nine or ten. Um, so let's uh, maybe we should take a minute and talk about a partial. 
because that's when I think about small dollar people um, coming in, that's a, that's a good way to not, not lose all your, not lose all your money in the first deal. Uh, mm -hmm. right? uh, mm -hmm. Can you see this page? Yes. Okay. Um, uh, this is Dave puts uh, JKP holdings. Um, I'm not shilling for him. I don't get paid. Um, I like what he's been doing. Um, he's, uh, you know, he's, he's a good guy. He's, you know, he's a solid guy. He's, you know, he's, 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 you know, he's, he's working it. Um, but mm -hmm. as I'm, as I'm moving screens, I set that up that uh, like, oh yeah, I should, you know, he's, he's somebody you can get some good education from and he's got some great tools. Uh, mm -hmm. So uh, let me see. He does you. partials. Um, well, I'm going to wander, I'm going to wander into partials um, in a second here. Uh, let me see. Oh, I got to go open the window first. Hang on. I'm going to stop my share. That way I get to go figure out where I need to go. Um, and we'll come back and I promise I'm going to come back and do a partial in a, in a minute. Because I'm going to, I'm going to read you. I'm going to show us something from, uh, from a national note buyer, um, which is, I found, a, I found, found this to be a good explanation of how, uh, how this all works. Um, so, so as you look to buy and sell stuff, so this is, um, this is, you can buy, this is, I talked about a $90,000, $90,000 face value, um, Sale price ninety five thousand. Borrower puts down. Homeowner puts down five thousand. It's a ninety thousand dollar note. So the loan to value is eighty nine percent. There's a little. There's a little uh, uh, something in it for them to lose. Um, I wonder about that these days. I mean, can we continue this escalation? You know, I don't know. Maybe. I, you know, maybe the Fed keeps printing money. You know, we can. So mm -hmm. they write a so they write a ninety thousand dollar loan, ten percent, fifteen year term, nine sixty seven a month, twenty four payments have been made. So you're buying this note for eighty four two fifty seven. That was the numbers that I put up at the beginning. So mm -hmm. you're buying an eighty four thousand or you're buying or selling an eighty four thousand dollar note, depending which side you want to be on. They would pay you this. They'd pay you sixty six thousand for the eighty four thousand. That's them planning a 15% uh, margin. So they want to buy it for 15% yield. Right? Mm. Or they say, well, let's sell the first half of the payments for 40,000 and then the first five years of the payments. And then that still leaves 96 payments for you after. And so you can sell, so you can take, you take less of a haircut uh, selling, uh, selling a partial. You take, mm. you take on the buy side as buying a partial. You get to buy something that has much better equity coverage. So the lower the value of the asset, the more I'm interested in a partial, right? Um, mm. But if you know, as we get into, as you know, if, if there's a house that's you know ninety percent loan to value. Um, I don't want to buy the whole 90%. I'd be happy to have a 45% loan to value. Now, and when I bought when I bought this big portfolio, I said I spent you know three quarters of a million dollars on 36 notes all at once. Mm. Um, I thought you know, and, and I didn't say nothing could go wrong. I knew that you know there was that's why I bought 36. Um, but the uh, you would have thought that people that had a 50% loan to value in their house would wouldn't walk away they wouldn't let me take the house you know they, mm -hmm. they'd fight to keep it um one of those notes right now um i just canceled a foreclosure on a uh, 47 year old homeowner he died oh wow right we were in the process of where they were in the pro the loan servicer was in the process of foreclosing and he died well mm -hmm. i have a thirty thousand dollar loan on a hundred and fifty thousand dollar house Stop everything. Just stop. Just stop. Just let it work itself out. Mm. It's sitting there. It's a 12% interest rate note. 
It's just sitting there, 12% interest. I'm in first position. Why do I have to go and upset this family any more than they are? Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Where, how much more in fees and expenses and attorney fees and all this stuff do I need? Or if I can just sit, right? So, so my position is 30,000 against the house worth more than 100. So if you bought a partial, in this case, you've got a $40,000 position against a house worth 95, mm -hmm. right? So mm -hmm. if the market collapses, the home goes down to 75, you're okay, mm -hmm. right? And you're also mm -hmm. okay, The oh, way back at the beginning, um, we should have talked about what makes it worthwhile for somebody to be a, an entry-level person to be become a homeowner as opposed to a renter, right? And if it's a better deal to own the home, then go rent an apartment, hmm. right? So we try to price, we try to price our little houses at about what a two bedroom apartment would be. So they can live in a nice two bedroom apartment or they can have a little three one, little thousand square foot cinder block three one with a yard. Okay. For the same money. Right. So that way they're not sitting there in the house going, oh my God, it's, it's just cost so much. You know, you know so. Um, but again, in the last, what, what, what are we teaching people now? The federal government has said you can't evict anybody and they don't have to pay. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. what, are we, what are we teaching people? We're teaching people it's not okay to pay your, it's okay to not pay your bills. Right. So this is, this is um, a Marinote exchange. This is a, uh, you can go download this from their website. And they give you all this education about how they will sell things from you and sell things to you and buy things from you, right? What's the name of the site? <laughs> um, this is a, 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 note, a note company called Amerinote, A-M-E-R-I-N-O-T-E. -E. Okay. And, and they, that what they look, their business is looking for small ticket seller finance loans and either buying them outright or buying part of them, right? So if I'm doing something in, a, in an IRA, if I can go figure out how to put these things in IRAs, I'm happy to go take the back end of things because I think I'm going to live to be 70. And at 70, I may want to not okay. work. Mm -hmm. right? mm -hmm. So they mm -hmm. break down, you know, here's a partial where you keep part. Here's where you sell half. Um, here's where you sell half of the monthly payments. Um, and then they go through... Um, you know, buy in front end, I'll buy up. You know, I, I have not, but I'd love to buy some back end of some notes at a, at a discount because again, I, you know, I'd rather, I'd rather bank some money at 10% due in 15 years than, you know, have it, have it in my hands today. If I, if I buy the back end of a note that starts in 10 years, well, at least I'm not going to screw that up. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. Right. But uh, the Amerinote, the Amerinote, uh, um, this 50 page uh, document they have is meant to educate the market to make better customers for them. Right. And, and just like you, you said, you've got 10 books. I have spent enormous amount of time <laughs> doing this. Um, you know, I've spent way more time learning than I have doing deals. Um, I, like, I like having a little space um, I like things that, you know, I've got plenty that can keep me up at night. Um, so I just send money to Pensacola because I know the storm's going to blow through and things will be okay. Right. Um, I'm, I like Florida, um, because it is, uh, migration is up going there. People are always moving to Florida. Mm -hmm. uh, I have not enjoyed, um, being in uh, the rural South. I have not enjoyed being in urban uh, Rust Belt cities. Um, I have, I, I, there's people that make a fantastic living in Michigan. I have not, mm. <laughs> I, I have not. Um, it's uh, something again, needs, needs boots on the ground. You know, if I, if, you know, if I said to Eric and maybe I'll say this to Eric, Oh, I don't know, Eric, let's go buy 20 houses, right? Well, now we've done something, right? Now we've set a target. Now we know what we need to do. And what do I need to, what do I need to buy 20 houses? I need some partners. 20 houses sounds like a great idea. Right? And what do we need? We need some partners. We need a eh, million dollars, 
well, maybe, yeah, yeah, probably a million dollars cash. Um, and, you know, how do we, how do we, you know, how do we do that with, uh, you know, with a group of guys, you know, we, you know, a group of people, we put, put a little handful of people that we get along with, that we all understand our roles, that we're, that we're, that we're, again, you don't need very many partners, you don't need very many locations, but you need to figure out something that you can repeat again and again and again. And mm. I've, um, Eric's company is building four houses right now. I'm, I've got paid off on the first one already. And the, uh, the first one's done. The next two are in line and the fourth one's gonna take a little bit. And the money is sitting there and it's okay. You know, it's, it's, you know, I, I know that the asset is worth more now than when we started. So whenever you do one of these fix and flip things, the, pro the house is worth something. Then it goes down once, once, once they're destroying it and then it comes back to life, right? So there's this moment mm -hmm. where you're naked. Right. And, that, mm -hmm. and that moment in that Bel Air house was a mm -hmm. year. <laughs> okay, it was a year. Mm -hmm. and I made $100,000 in that deal and immediately, because I had, because I'm me, as that one was percolating, I went into another one. So the hundred I made on that one, I lost on the other. Wow. So, you know, so I don't do big things anymore. No, 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 no. Right. Mm -hmm. you know, so, um, so what I'm, about Georgia? They say you have to have a, a license for Georgia. Yeah. yeah different states have different states have different rules and Georgia, you need to register, um, and get a license, um, in, uh, in Ohio, you need to register in order to uh, start a foreclosure. You have to be an entity in the state and lots of states you have to be there. You have to be registered that I'm a, that my company is a, is a, is a legal entity here for you to have standing to go in for foreclosure. Georgia is protect, Georgia rightfully is protecting its voters from predatory lenders in, um, in uh, um, that have come in and are just, you know, just beating, just steal, well, they're stealing people's houses. They are lending people more money than the house is worth. So they default, so they can take the house. Now they're doing, they're doing all, all these different kinds of, uh, well, the phrase in the business is loan to own. You know, mm. I'm gonna lend you money in a situation that you can't pay back because I wanna take your house. Wow. Right. So the mm -hmm. the largest. So location, how do we how do we how we as how do we as investors figure out which is the best state to invest in? Well, and it and it depend. It well, and again for me, I for me, I think it's who's my who at the other end, mm -hmm. right? Because okay. unless it's going to be me here in California, and and it is me here in California with I've got four of these. Uh, home refresh loans with Remax right now. You know, I've got, I've got four, they're all, they're like 20 and 60 mm -hmm. and a hundred thousand um, dollars. I've got, um, I've got two land flippers that uh, we're now going into our second deal. I'm doing, going into my second deal with them. And one of them will be the one I keep. And these are people that buy land at wholesale, quick turn around and sell it. And I'm interested in doing seller finance and then getting those notes. Right. So, mm. you know, so, so they buy it, they'll buy some acreage for 10, sell it for 20 on terms. I'm happy to, you know, get my, you know, get my 10 back and then split the 10 in profit with the, uh, with, with the, the land flipper. So I come out with, I invested 10 and I have a $15,000 note. Mm. Right. So I'm make I'm creating my own discount. I see. Right. So, so those kinds of deals are available. I guess. Hey, I, Steve, I have a yeah. question. This is Aldo. Hi, Aldo. Uh, hey, how are you doing? I have the question is, um, do you prefer investing in notes um, in, uh, I guess, uh, contract for deed versus mortgages, like judicial versus non-judicial states? Um, so my background is I've been 40 years in credit and collections, 20 of that owning a collection, owning a group of collection agencies. And I sued a hundred people a month. Um, mm -hmm. I had lawyers on staff. Um, so I'm not afraid of a judicial foreclosure. 
um, what does it do? It adds, it adds time. It adds a year. Call it a year. Um, today, well, it depends on the states, okay. right? Pardon depends me? on the states, right? Yeah, it depends on the state. But just for ballpark, let's just say it takes a year. Um, so uh, you have to make sure that your asset is uh, going to be there in a year. Um, the Alexandria story that the home when I bought it was inhabited by the granddaughter of the deceased owner. And she moved out and squatters moved in. And by the time they got done, the house is a complete gut now. You know, wow. so, you know, so that's the downside. Um, there, uh, Louisiana has its own fuzzy set of rules that I will never go back to Louisiana again. I do not want to learn Napoleonic code. Uh, you know, um, Georgia, uh, Georgia protects its consumers. Um, and that's that, and and or they protect their voters, and and they should. Judges are elected. They they you know they need to take care of the people that elected them. Um, so, uh, if you're in the if you're going to make a mark and chase the uh, you know fast foreclosure game, well then you go to, then you go to Texas. Uh, Texas mm -hmm. is weird. You can't garnish somebody's paycheck, but you can have their you can take their house in a month. Downside there is they've got how long more than a year that they can come back and say, I want it back. Here's your money. <laughs> you know. Wow. So, so I've been, I've been fiddling around with, uh, with tax liens and foreclosures um, in Florida. Um, and I haven't won anything yet. Um, what a surprise. It's, you know, that market's super competitive too. Um, but it's, you know, I'm, I'm trying to make, I'm trying to make uh, paper where I have some control over it and I have control over the stuff that I'm doing here. And I have, I have indirect control over what I'm doing uh, in Pensacola with Sunrise Acquisition Services, because again, we've been, I'm, you know, I'm probably their number two source of money. You know? So I'm important to them, they're important to me. And you know, then it's kind of like, well, what do you want to buy? Eh, you know, I don't care, what do you want to buy? Um, but what did I learn? I don't want to buy things that are beyond my blue collar sensibility. Um, we built a beautiful house. Just, there's a back webinar, a little uh, thing on this. We built this beautiful house um, on, right, on the, right on the bay, looked straight out of the Gulf of Mexico. It was magnificent. It was wonderful. Uh, builder got distracted, took an extra nine months. You know, oh well. Uh, but the deal was structured that I got paid first. So the builder walked away with, you know, nothing really. You know, so I don't use that builder anymore. He doesn't want me, I don't want him. You know, we, you know, we're just like, oh, well, we're done. Um, but the, uh, but, but again, you know, if I'm looking to, you know, what am I looking to do? I'm looking to do a combination of things. I can do paper, I can do paper rentals development and I want to do it in a location where I have some kind of control, you know, I, you know, so it's, I'm in, I split my time between North and South, Cal, uh, North and South California. And, you know, would I go do mobile homes on land down there, down in, down in the high desert? Yeah, maybe, but I don't have time, you know, you know, like I said, we're writing, you know, we're, we're writing more than a hundred loans uh, a month in the small ticket business. So that's, so I've been distracted and taken away from this work. You know, this is this has become a hobby. Three years ago, four years ago, four years ago, this was my job. This is what mm. I was doing. I had a, uh, if, I, yeah. if I may, uh, Steve, yeah. um, uh, I know uh, you were uh, touching on uh, licensing. There's some states that are uh, require licensing to actually buy notes and also to service them, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, where where can we find which states? Because every state is different, right? There is. I'm going to send you to um, JKP. Yeah. Yeah. Go to JKP Holdings. Um, so Dave Putz. A, uh, uh, he's in New Jersey. Uh, Dave Putz, mm -hmm. and he has he has a marvelous library of all of all of that stuff, and it's up to date. Oh, great. Yeah, he work he works hard at keeping it up to date. I've backed away. I've backed away from keeping my things 
current because I've got a, I have a lender, you know, not only, not only do I have a lender's license in California, I have a lender's license in Florida, which allows me to charge above the standard 12% uh, uh, state usury. I see. Yeah. So, yeah, so that was, so that was what we decided is we were going to go back to what our strengths were, which was money management and sourcing things. So I'm, you know, I'm financing roofing projects. So you want a you want a nine percent note on a roof? I can I can create that. Yeah. Wow. Okay. So uh, so you know, so uh, so it's it's unsecured. Um, right. No, you you want it, secure loan, right? Yeah, but is it really unsecured? It's a roof. It's not. Yeah. A house, right. <laughs> you know, the house gets yeah. sold. The house gets sold. The note gets paid. True. Right. Um, mm -hmm. I have. You know, I've. I've. I left the unsecured debt buying world and went into secured mortgages thinking that it was safer, calmer, uh, more, more suited for a guy with, uh, with gray hair, right? Um, mm. I, I used to buy out of statute payday loans and, and credit cards and hospital bills and wow. all that kind of stuff. And as it turns out, I'm, I'm, this is what I know how to do. So it doesn't bother me that it's that it's unsecured. The price is lower. I can buy more. Mm -hmm. Have you ever mm -hmm. bought uh, lottery winnings? <clears throat> no, no. I've really been interested in that whole vertical, like divorce <laughs> settlements, lottery winnings, um, uh, insurance claims, and I. And again, it's a whole different business. So you know. So what I. What we finance, what we finance now, is we finance uh, retail installment contracts for uh, 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 doctors, dentists, uh, uh, car uh, car repair places, you know that kind of thing. I, I look for I look for how many three thousand dollar loans can I put out because wow. I'm because I'm buying the I'm because I'm buying those for two thousand. Mm, nice. so again, I'm I'm creating my own discount. In that instance, I control what who bought what borrower. I know their credit score, bank account, all I do all the underwriting. Mm -hmm. So in these, mm -hmm. you've got to go and say, you know, again, you got your five exits for you know for for a note, and you've got to you got to pick you know why uh, loan mods. I hear people you know talk about workouts. We're gonna do a workout. You don't think the last three people tried? <laughs> you know, right? You don't think mm -hmm. professionals tried? You know, you know what what makes what makes you what makes you special? Um, you know, I I I know how to mail a FedEx package to people. That's really scary. You know, I, is that the business I want to be in? You know, you know, do I want to do I want to mail court docs to people? I nice. I did that for twenty years. Mm -hmm. You know, you know. So I you know I so I like the idea of putting somebody in a house that is. Um, they're grateful for the opportunity. We know we did that. We know we did them. Um, we provided real benefit, and we know that they. We well, my lady in that little house. Uh, you know, she was she was short. You know, she was she owed six fifty. She only had five hundred. What, what do you say? No, get out. No, you take the fight. You know, she made she had made I think eighteen payments in a row. Okay, yeah, it's COVID. Okay, you know, you're gonna have a month. You know, you're gonna mm -hmm. have a month. Um, and of course she covered it up, you know, she covered it up next month. Yeah. So. Quick question for you for a, um, performing, performing notes, first position, apart from uh, paper stack and, uh, note, um, places, you know, like, uh, uh, what's it called? I can't remember the name. I'm, I'm drawing a blank. Um, uh, anyways, there's uh, some platforms other than those ones. Any other places that you would suggest to look at? Um, like so you've got uh, you've got J um, JKP. Um, mm -hmm. I know he typically has got a, a file of a hundred uh, loans. You know, it's usually what his inventory is. Um, Colonial Capital. Um, I've never bought from them because I've got this idea that you know that they charge retail, and you know I. You know, I don't know. Colonial, Colonial Capital is Eddie Speed's uh, uh, right uh, deal, um, but uh, um, but it's just you know just felt just felt like I was buying retail, so I had to go hunting on my own. You know, I I, I don't 
I think I think when you're buying one or two notes, uh, retail probably is okay. <laughs> You know, that's probably all right. Um, local uh, local marketing for me is is where it's at. Um, I you know I just as soon go find again. Uh, I've got I've got team I've got a, I've got the team in uh, Pensacola and a team in Northwest Indiana. A uh, guy who's up there I've known for half a dozen years now. <coughs> but of the two, um, you know, I'm most comfortable with all the economics around Florida. Um, it's just, it's, I'm, there's no headwind of, um, of, uh, lab, of, uh, of no jobs and, and people leaving and, you know, high, high crime and all that, you know, so I, I just assume, I just assume go hunt for paper in, in Florida. Um, and you, you buy a list, you buy, you, you can right. you buy a list from, and, and mail just like everybody else does. Um, but, but we've picked up some stuff just from being there a little while and getting to know, getting to know, um, uh, a couple of, uh, just a couple, um, uh, real estate brokers. What about, uh, seller finance notes? Is that something that, uh, yeah, you can, I... yeah, you, yeah, you can, you can go extract a list of just those, you know? So, um, and so we also have been, I've been, I've been nibbling around land academy, uh, land buying and selling, and there's there's tools available from DataTree, where you can pick my geographic zip code or my area, and I can drill down um, through either DataTree or uh, any of the Black Knight products, um, which I think is tied to First American Title, um, and say I want to extract a list of of seller of seller finance and how do you define that is a note in town and only one. There's only, only one creditor listed. Um, that's the only note they have, or there's only a few. Um, and then you, can, then you can go target those folks. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, you know, if, if I was back in this, if I was back in this, um, I think I'd be looking at, uh, you know, I pick my neighborhood that I really like, and this may be, and I was, I was against this. When I started this six years ago, I wanted to be really spread out to limit my risk. Turns out that was, that was not for me. What, wor what would have worked for me is if I took like a four block area and because all I need is a handful and mm -hmm. worked every door, right? And became the guy that people knew. I'm, you know, I, uh, my skill set is yapping, right? <laughs> you know, um, and if I can talk to you, you know, in the pre-COVID COVID days, if I can talk to you, well, then if you need help, I can figure out how to help. Right? You know, you got this. You got this note. You want to get rid of it? Ah, you know, they skip a payment every now and then. Yeah, here, give it to me. Or there's a, you know, there's a, there's a foreclo you know, the foreclosures. You know, there's a, there's a foreclosure. I can take that off your hands. You know, you don't have to do this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But again, you know, you know, we, you know, we touched on BPO for a minute, you know, what's the, what's the house worth? Well, you know, the, a BPO is a, a digital, uh, that was it. There's another service that gives you a AVM an automated value, something elevated right. value model. Um, mm -hmm. Anybody who knows an appraiser um, and I'm married to the daughter of an appraiser would tell you that all that stuff is BS it takes an appraiser to tell you what's a house, what a house is worth. All the BPOs you see typically are written at a retail value. They are not written at a distressed value. The seller is going to give you, if I'm going to sell you a note, I'm going to tell you the Zillow estimate and not tell you, which is just based on sale price per square foot in that geographic area for that vintage property. I'm gonna. I'm not gonna give you what the distressed value of it is, and that's really what you're buying. You're buying the distressed value. Mm. Yeah. You know, if it's ugly, if the note is if the note is ugly, the house and the inside is gonna be ugly. You know? and and again, the squalor that people will live in in desperation is just that's you know, it's just what it is. So if you see a payment plan that's really messed up eventually it's going to go belly up. Yeah. You can almost yeah. be assured that yeah. it's going to go belly Unless up. Unless you can find out something about that. You know, you've got a $900 a month mortgage payment. They're making payments every three, four months. They're, you know, they're fighting the fight. You know, 
if you can afford to reprice that note at $500 a month, maybe they stay, you know, maybe they mm-hmm. stay. Or again, we, not to get on my government rant, because I really don't have one. Um, it's okay, we're being taught, we, we as a nation are being taught that it's okay not to pay your mortgage. So right. when this is over, they're going to have to, they, the government is gonna to have to restrict the flow of foreclosures because they're not going to repeat what happened in 2010. Well, that, that segues into my thought too. What do you think is going to happen once everything opens up for uh, note investors? It takes a couple of years for what's going on today to get into the market. Okay. The, 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 the crash the last crash, which was bank created, happened in 2007, 2006, 2007. It right. didn't hit the foreclosure market until 2009. Eight, nine. Yeah. Um, uh, I know a guy who, well, a guy who bought 100, 100 second mortgages in Southern California uh, in 2012. He killed it. He just killed it. But it took that long for that paper to work, for that paper to get out into the market. Mm. So, so would you say it's if this is a, a prime opportunity to study and get ready for the, I won't say the floodgates to be open, but well, just the, be poised to get some good notes? It'll never be floodgates. They've just, you know, that that was just too tough the last time. Um, okay. They've they've learned, you know, they've learned how to print money with, you know, with with some real muscle now. Um, you know, they, you know, they're going to keep people, they're going to keep people, uh, in their homes. Um, and, and again, like I said, the, you know, the local judge is going to protect the local landlord. Well, the same thing goes for the senators and congressmen and all that. Um, the, uh, so it's never going to be floodgates. I don't think, I think it becomes a steady trickle, you know, just to stay, it goes back to, you know, we used to have a million foreclosures at any one time. Well, we'll get back to that million foreclosures and, just kind of hold it there and let them come up. Um, there's the, I, I, I've, uh, Bruce Norris, uh, the Norris group, um, has got lots of good information too. Um, uh, real estate He's fantastic. Um, and he's, uh, and he lobbies for a, since all the loans are owned by Fannie and Freddie now, just go through an, a government rewrite and just take all these delinquent mortgages, roll them up into new two and a half percent, 40 year notes. Just, just rewrite everybody in the country who's delinquent. You know, since we're, you know, since we're printing money like mad anyway. Yeah, you know, and then. And so, then, what do you suggest? That the... Go ahead. So, what do I? What do I? I'm, I'm not a suggestion guy. I'm a, like, here's my experience. Um, I think the opportunities are in um, where, where the, where the, where we're moving. I think. I think we're moving to Florida. I think we're moving to. I think we're moving to warmer climates. I think we're all getting older. I see a gray beard there. I got a gray beard here, mm-hmm. um, and we're and we're getting older. We want simple. We want easy, both as a tenant, homeowner, or the investor. And and that's that's you know I think it's it's this it's going to be you know it's not going to we're not, we're not going to come back to some flourishing. You know, another ten years of go go. You know, you know, prices going nuts and all this stuff. I think we're gonna, we're gonna just settle into. You know, things are okay. You know, I think the government can ma- manufacture things are okay. You know, so that means you know that means decent yield um, to snipe good opportunity. I think you got to know you got to you got to know your you know your neighborhood or you got to know your particular asset that you're really, you know, you're really good at, you know, so, and I'm, I'm way too scattered in too many things to say land is where it's at or mobile homes is where it's at, or, you know, or bi- or biotech is where it's at, you know, or, you know, cause I hear biotech is where it's at, <laughs> you know? but what do I, well, I don't well, know you, anything, you, you know, I don't know anything about Bitcoin. You've mentioned, <laughs> right. But you've mentioned so many avenues it just blew my mind. Like all I wanted to buy was a performing note, and then we're going to stellar finance. We're going to all these different aspects that I need to know. I need to learn to enhance my 
ability and, you know, um, to have an arsenal, you know, you know, to be flexible. I just don't want to see being in pigeonhole with just performing notes is not good enough. You need to have flexibility in this but, particular but, business. But you got to kind of, I, my, one of my biggest failings is I'm everywhere at once. And right. I, need, I need to, you know, I need to do, instead of being really wide, I need to be narrow and deep. And, and this is my story of my life. Um, so, you know, we, so say I'm going to be a, I'm going to chase distressed seconds and I want to okay. be hands off, say, that's what I want to do. And I want to be as hands off as I can. Maybe I go to JKP or Fuquan Bilal um, or uh, Dave Van Horn or whoever, you know, any of those guys right. and I get a few of them. And I get an experienced, um, in my world, it'd be a collector. Um, mm -hmm. In this world, it's an asset manager. Uh, okay. I like Bill, I've, I've had lots of conversations with a guy in Pennsylvania named Bill McCafferty. And Bill mm -hmm. has a bunch of stuff up like this to watch. And, um, and Bill, Bill's just a regular guy. Bill's a grinder. You know, Bill just you know, gets the file. These are the things, we work our way through. It's gonna take a year. Boom, 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 done. Next, boom, 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 done. Right. And and I don't have to do anything with Bill except write a few checks. Yeah. And write a few mm -hmm. checks and wait, knowing that you know the report's gonna come. You know, and and I don't care about the report. You know, and the the report for me is where's the check? You know, the check is the report. <laughs> the chaos, you know, everything mm -hmm. else is just everything else is an expense. Right. 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 Mm -hmm. so, you know, so that so if I was gonna do seconds, I'd find a I'd find a place that I liked I'd get Bill to go and and again I got, I got nothing I get nothing from Bill other than he's the guy I'd go to um mm -hmm. here pick up this you know I'm going to hire you to do this work for me I want you to be the who that's going to follow you know that we agree on what the rules are going to be right mm -hmm. uh, and it's you know that costs a little money right? you build it all in um so yeah, that, well, like I said so, yeah yeah I'm, I'm just a performing note guy if I get performing notes and and I know that as an extra strategy, I have to have some money set aside. I always set enough money aside just in case it doesn't perform. I have to do the exit strategies of maybe foreclosure or a modification or something. Just keep some money just in case that does happen. But I would like to just be the performing guy mm -hmm. and just try to learn to set it, forget it, or just check on it. And if there is a good deal as I get into it more and more, then I will you know, get an, a non-performing and make it good and look for the, you know, make sure there's a lot of uh, value in that particular property. Hmm. Right. So um, offline, I'll send you uh, a little chunk of our performers. And, sure. And just if for anything, just to, you know, have do a little exercise and, you know, what do I think right, these right. are? You know, okay. You know, no so problem. that that may, you know, that may be one. I've, you know, I've got a, I've got a, I have a, not even, oh, I like the phrase. One of the, we got to, we got to wrap. I've got an hour and a half. Um, I like, there's a new phrase in the, in the business, in the business now. It's called sub performing. Either you're performing or you're not performing. Either you're, I'm sub performing. So either you're performing or you're not performing. But now we have sub performing. I got a sub performing loan in, uh, in South Carolina. Guy's doing his best. He is. But, you know, he's, it ain't so hot. Um, <laughs> what am I doing? I'm, it's a twenty-four thousand dollar note on a sixty thousand dollar property. Fine, whatever. So I'm making mm -hmm. six percent. Oh well, you know. Mm -hmm. You know, am I gonna am I gonna kick a guy out of his house? He has a two hundred and ten dollar payment. Wow. Two hundred, and he's struggling, mm -hmm. right? The guy's got issues. Mm -hmm. Okay, am I gonna? Where if I get if I throw him out, where is he gonna go? Yeah. Right. That's right. You, yeah. you do your own servicing, right? Sometimes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sometimes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And this note, that, yeah. note, that note in particular is at, is at FCI. And it was, it was the very first note I bought and I've learned he's been my, you know, he, he was my school. You know, you can go give somebody $25,000 to go to school or you can spend $15,000 on a note and work it for five years. <laughs> yeah. Right. Now, are you are you concerned being Dodd Frank compliant? No, 
because okay. I'm as squeaky clean and compliant as you ever going to get. Um, I've been doing this forever. I, I, I stay under the three loans a year. Um, I can do three loans. I've got two corporations. They can each do three loans. Uh, so I can get to nine or 12 or 15. Um, you know, if I decided I wanted to do that, you know, just with different ownership structures, you know, you, know, you and I, you and I can go do a deal or you can be the owner this time. I can be the owner next time. You know? okay. And again, it's, it's the little close knit team. We don't need we don't need to be everywhere. We don't need to be you know I I'm too old to want to be all that anymore. Um, mm -hmm. But we just you know I got people that I can trust and that they can trust me. Yeah, you know, and then go find something to work on. Nice. All right. Very good. Very good. All right. My goodness, I was going to keep this to an hour. Oh well. I'm sorry. No, 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 Sorry no. I'm asking all these questions. Clearly, I had a good time, right? <laughs> this was this is great for me. <laughs> you know, I think mm -hmm. Eric's probably asleep. Uh, <laughs> yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, thanks. I never me. sleep. What are you talking about? <laughs> I know. All right. Um, See those pictures I sent of the updated. We're just about to put. Uh, we're best about to put the next Americas on the market. And did you see that tree stump? Oh, I, well, you want me to go I look said, at things? The concrete you... guys needed a project. So they spent two days nonstop to dig out a tree stump. How can it I... was a uh, tree stump wouldn't even fit in a dumpster. Oh, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Uh, just, just an exciting, entertaining thing. Let me see if I can figure out how to share that. Oh, it, uh, it doesn't. The picture I'm an, doesn't I'm do an old guy. Oh. I'm an old guy. I recently switched to. Uh, uh, to a uh, uh, to Apple, so here's the inside of that this. That tree stump is about 15 feet across. All right. Oh my goodness! <laughs> it doesn't look as big wow. as it is. It's huge. All right. And so, oh here and here's a. Let me see if I can do this. Let's oh, now you're doing good. Oh, you got the house. Yeah, yeah, that looks good, man. We're sod should be down tomorrow, and that one will be listed the next probably three days. All right. All right. How much does that house cost? Uh, we're gonna be. That's the Sips one finally. Yeah. Go yeah, inside. Yeah. It's amazing how quiet it is. So that's the Sips one finally finished up. We had a little bit of a delay because hurricane play time. Yeah. So. So, uh, it, I think we'll be into that one on the construction for probably 120 and Steve we I told you that was going to be about 170 to 180 we're probably going to list it for two and a quarter and we'll probably sell it in a day mm -hmm. yeah. the market is just totally out of control there's no inventory right and and that's back to that being under the median you have a much broader market that you can appeal to you know so you know even if you were even if you were in it for you know 175 and out for two and a quarter no into it for 150 and out for 200 net. Um, you know, you make 50. You have arrangements to share sure. that with you know, with a partner. You you know, you got. I'm okay lending on that because it's it's safe. Yeah, you, know, you know, I don't I don't need to take half the deal if it's safe. Right. You know, and so, but uh, they're going to be a little wraparound porch there, or a little deck or something. Or that can be uh, uh, not not on this one, but that'll, that'll be sawed all the way up to the front. It looks a little bit cruddy right now, but once the sod's down that and that porch is blown off, you can't tell. Actually, if you go back to the stump, go back Maybe. to the stump for a second. Maybe I can. I can't remember if with that picture that Sin did. Now you can't see on the other side of the stump. Now you can't just to that right. That sidewalk is that one that we listed. I don't think it ever, I, I think it did get listed, but it sold before the listing was really even out. Mm -hmm. And that was the one that we had done. Uh, that one should, the, the SIP should have finished at the same time, but we got hung up with the hurricane. And then right where the stump is, obviously it's going to be one. And then to the right of that blue one, those ones are starting now. Yeah. And so, so what are the, how, uh, how many square feet? Uh, 1200. Yeah. 1200 square foot. So, you know, uh, one hundred and seventy dollars a square foot, something like that at retail is you know is reachable for people, you know, and it's also yep. reachable also reachable as a rental, you know. This would rent this will rent for, you know, what would this rent for? 
1,400, no, 1,800 a month? Uh, probably 14 to 1,500 right now. Yeah. 14, 1,500. You got a brand 14, new 15 house. might be stretching, but 1,400 for brand new. The one where the tree stump is, is actually pre-sold. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah. And so, you know, nope. so there's, you know, there's that game too, you know, so it's a, so it's a boring 7% return. Okay. You know, all right. You know, so anyway, um, I want to thank you. I'm very sorry for the, uh, for the break, for the problem, getting people in and out and, and having the, uh, um, having uh, uh, problems getting the other people in the group. I don't know what's wrong with my Zoom address. I'll go fix the meetup for next month and post it on the meetup group and send this out. But uh, thanks, John. Thanks, Lloyd. Um, good to meet you, Aldo. And uh, Thank you, Steve. All right. And, uh, all right. and Eric, uh, oh, I don't know. Let's go buy a house. Uh, we can do that. <laughs> all right. We okay. can do all that. Right. We can do that tomorrow. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, everybody, for uh, uh, having me on. I appreciate it. Okay. I'll be there next month. Okay. See you, Lloyd. Right, great. Okay. See you. All right. Take care, everybody. Thank you. Bye. Bye.